What's up everyone, M3 Black Shadow here. Thanks for tuning in to my first YouTube video. Today's video is gonna be about multimedia navigation. So now that we're here inside the car, there are a variety of choices when it comes to multimedia navigation units for your BMW M3 E46. Um, I actually tried when I first got the car, um, I, I really wanted to get either the Dynavin system or I wanted to get the Avon system. The previous owner was telling me about these two uh, units. The car actually did not have stock navigation or anything when I got it it was just the the radio in the car um, and I at the time the Avon Avant 2 was actually sold out and they were um, doing R&D to, to manufacture the Avant 3 so I got on the waiting list I waited a really long time I couldn't wait much longer so uh, without having in-dash navigation so I went and I bought the Eonon system honestly it was terrible. Save yourself the $350. Don't get that unit. Um, but finally, I actually got the Avon Avant 3. And this unit, I must say, is really, really awesome. Um, and so today, I'm just going to walk you through uh, a couple of the features. I'm not going to go through everything because otherwise this video could be two hours long. Uh, but we're just going to cover some of the main things. We're going to cover uh, the DVR system. We'll cover the backup camera. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what the cell service looks like and how that works. Um, and then I'll give you a high-level overview of the install. So let's start with turning the car on. So I turned it on a little while ago. I don't know if it's still in stand up mode or standby mode rather. So when you first turn the car on, you can see that this unit, it's really, it's like um, OEM. It's, it's really awesome. It's got the uh, BMW connected drive graphic. Uh, it actually, they modeled this to look uh, just like the stock navigation system so you can see it's got uh, the buttons that are very similar um, and also I just turned off the headlights because I don't want to kill my battery while I'm here in the garage but you can see uh, it has the lights that match actually what I'll do is I'll put the parking lights on so this unit is basically like a full Android system 
uh, it's it's really awesome uh, and it has it, I mean you can basically imagine it's it's like a tablet um, and so in this unit uh, you can so this is the, it basically brings you right to um, the default like shortcut screen so there's there's two pages as part of this uh, shortcut screen um, and you can actually put whatever apps that you want you can c totally customize uh, these two pages um, and then over here if you click this button this takes you actually to the main menu uh, where all of your apps lie and so if you wanted to move one of your apps from here into the main um, or into the shortcut menu you would just hold it drag it and drop it in uh, and then you'd have access to everything here now the navigation app you can actually download whatever navigation system from the Play Store that you want and then from that point um, you can actually just go into the settings and link it to this button uh, there's actually a the same button right here so you actually never really have to click the app uh, you can just click the button right on on the side um, so this has a variety of features I mean it basically takes this is a 2004 uh, M3 and it, it basically brings it from 2004 right to 2018 with all the features uh, the DVR system, which stands for Driving Video Recorder, is so awesome, and uh, it actually has lane departure warnings and uh, lets you know when you get too close to the car in front of you. You can obviously toggle that. I have it off all the time because let's be real, I drive an M3, and that would be going off all the time. So, you know, I'll, I'll walk you through it. I'll show you what it looks like and how it works. Um, basically, uh, what you need to do is if you have the, the stock radio and you do not have the, um, the, the navigation as part of the car, then you have to buy the relocation bracket. I've heard some people, they install it without the relo relocation bracket, but um, I mean, the truth is by doing that, it's kind of... Uh, it, it's just not it's just not the proper way of doing it and and your contr your AC controls will just be like jiggling around not like in place um, so I'm a big believer and if you have a BMW you should do it right um, and get the relocation bracket I don't think it's that expensive so you get that and then uh, the unit itself now the install is already complete but the unit is actually very uh, very thin it's it's awesome the the Eonon unit that I had was much longer I think part of that was because it had a CD player um, in it but let's be real who has who uses CDs anymore um, when especially when this has full access to the internet uh, app store Spotify so on and so forth you really don't um, you really just don't need a CD player it takes up on you know it takes up space um, so this iBus app is really awesome as well. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of things, but it connects into the back, uh, it connects right into the wiring harness of the car, and then it gives you all sorts of cool diagnostics. Let's you do coding. I can actually, um, I coded the the double blink Euro style hazards um, right through the the Avon three, which is which is really neat. So. Um, I'm going to focus this video in today on um, the, the DVR, the driving video recorder, how that works. I'll, I'll walk you through the, the install, the backup camera, so on and so forth. So um, the DVR system, there is an app for it. It uh, looks like that. Um, I do not have it on my shortcut menu because there is a button for it uh, right here. So if you click that, it takes you to this quick screen and then it'll bring you right into, into the video. Um, the reason I got that warning was because I'm not connected to the internet right now. Um, the way that this works, there's two ways that you can connect to the internet. The first way is you can actually go out and buy a SIM card. This runs on the AT&T uh, T-Mobile network, so if you have that as a phone provider, you can just go there, I think it's like 10 bucks a month, it's really cheap, you can get a SIM card, plugs right into a box in the back of the unit, and then it basically acts as its own cell phone, which is super cool. I actually have Verizon, and therefore, um, it, it's not compatible and, and to take out a whole new account on a T-Mobile or uh, AT&T is just not worth it to me. I connect via the second method which is via your personal hotspot on your phone. It does kind of kill the battery on your phone but uh, you know there's a cigarette lighter right there so you can just plug it in. Um, so the way that this works is you can see I know you probably don't know what's going on right here so I'm in my garage my garage door is actually made out of aluminum and therefore uh, there's a little bit of reflection of the tail lights but this is a feed of the backup camera and so what this unit does is it actually records the front and the back at all times um, there is the the camera is up here uh, let me see if I can get a flashlight it's a little bit easier so this is the camera right here uh, it's you know the way it's a little big but not it, it 
it oddly kind of fits right in with the car. It looks like it's supposed to be there. Um, and, you know, the, the whole unit really is just designed to flow right into the dash. It looks great. Um, I was actually at a car show at, not that long ago, and um, there was an E46 M3 there. And I thought that it had the... Um, the Avant 3, but when I got closer, I looked at this little A logo and it wasn't there, so it was actually the star, the OEM unit, and it's crazy how much alike they look. Um, so, you know, the whole thing just flows, it looks really well, nothing's gonna be sticking out, um, and that goes with the camera as well. So, in this camera, basically it's uh, stuck to the, to the um, windshield, but there's a uh, clip, so it comes out, and then this is, that, is the part that uh, has like double-sided tape on it and that sticks to the windshield and then in here uh, you can see filming myself film this um, but right in there let's see if I can get it to focus uh, you put a um, SD card mini SD card and that's how you get it to work if you just bought this unit and um, it says no card, you're getting a no card warning, that's why. Uh, I actually had to email support because I couldn't figure that out. It's not like super obvious. Um, go ahead and just click this back in. You gotta be careful with this unit just because um, the clips are a little bit breakable, so when you put it back in. Um, and then uh, I'll also walk you through the back of camera in a minute, but that's basically uh, how, there you go. Um, that's basically how it works, pretty straightforward. Um, okay, so right here, this button, when you turn that on, when you're driving on the road, it actually picks up the lane, the, uh, the, the lane dashes and the lines in the road, um, and it will actually warn you, like, if you're drifting or, uh, it picks up the cars in front of you. It, it's so cool. I mean, this is technology that you find on, you know, the modern cars, and, and this is, you know, this car is... 14 years old and, and just by installing this unit now it has all of the most modern features um, so you can go into settings right down here um, and then you can do recording time and, and adjust one I think it's like one two or three minute looping uh, based on the size SD card that you have um, it will record is it basically tell you know dictates how long uh, of, of recording it will hold so I, I forget I think I might have 32 gigabytes or something like that and therefore uh, it, it records for two hours it holds two hours worth of data uh, and then it just writes over itself which is which is really nice on the e -Onan unit that I used to have um, I actually used to have to go in there and constantly clear the card because it would just get so you know it would just download so many videos and then the whole unit would slow down uh, but this is nice that it just over you know just records over itself but with that said you should be careful because if, if, if you want to use the um, you know if you need to save the video for whatever reason like uh, I was actually at the track uh, and I drove home I didn't realize that it was gonna write over itself because uh, it was a two-hour drive back and um, I lost all of my my video so just keep that in mind and, and what I would recommend doing is uh, download uh, Dropbox onto onto the tablet and then just pop those videos right into Dropbox uh, before you head out. Um, so then if you click right in the center of the screen, it gives you additional options here. You can switch, so now I can see right out of the backup camera. Um, so it basically decides which one is the main display. Uh, you can also toggle the audio. Um, you can take snapshots, and then you can turn off the on and off the recording. Um, playback, this is where you go in here and you can actually see uh, all the past videos uh, and images and so on and so forth and you just toggle between the front and the back by clicking here. So everything is pretty straightforward. Um, the whole system is, is just clean, simple, easy, uh, it's not glitchy, it works the way it's supposed to. It also gives you uh, speed, it picks up on your GPS antenna, time, things like that. So if you got into an accident, and that's what's nice about recording out of the back too. Like a lot of times, you know, you could get rear-ended or something like that, and you know, this is recording the back at the same time. So um, overall, it's just like really a good thing to have. Um, you know for for safety reasons and then also just so you can like go back and watch whatever it is that you probably shouldn't have been doing in your m3 but it's kind of fun to watch <laughs> so um, I think that pretty much covers like the way the DVR unit works oh also the way that um, the backup camera the backup camera works is when you put the car in reverse 
it automatically goes into the backup camera. Um, and the way that it knows is you wire the backup camera uh, so that you hardwire it into the reverse light. So when that light comes on, it gives the camera power and therefore uh, the unit knows um, that it's time to, to, to display whatever's going on in the back. And, and what's cool is even when you turn on the unit, like, you know, if you watch when I turn the unit on, you know, it takes like 30 seconds to boot up. But if you turn the car on and immediately put it in reverse and back up, like this screen will come on, uh, even if it's in the loading mode. And that was something that I was a little bit worried about at first. Uh, but, you know, you can just jump in your car and go, uh, which is really cool. So that's kind of overview of the uh, high level overview of the Avon 3. I highly recommend this unit. Um, you can go to AvonUSA, A V I N USA dot uh, com to, to purchase all the accessories and things like that. Um, but what I'm going to do now is actually just walk you through what the installation looks like. I'm going to do the best I can because the car is already reassembled. But um, you know, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section. So basically, what you do is this camera here has a wire and it's kind of sticking out just because I pulled it out a couple times but you can tuck it tuck it in and so the idea is that you take this wire and you tuck it all the way along the back here and then this unit I'm in a convertible so this uh, a pillar it actually just you just grab it with your fingers and just pop it right out um, on the coupe version there's actually like a, a strip that kind of goes down the center uh, take like a plastic prying tool or something and you just pop that strip out. I believe there are screws, probably Torx or something like that uh, in there and you unscrew those and then the A-pillar thing, the A-pillar uh, cover comes off, comes off. Now underneath this is actually um, I think four, three or four large plastic clips that are underneath there and those clips actually hold in um, pre-existing wires. My guess is that it has something to do probably with the garage door opener or maybe uh, maybe the, the, the map lights, something like that. Um, so what I did was I actually tucked the wire in from the camera and then I popped those clips open and I tucked the wire on right underneath um, those clips and then the wire uh, comes down. Now the way that you you have to take the dash or the, um, the glove compartment out. So the way you take the glove box out there are there's a screw right there, there's a screw right there, there's a screw right there, there's one back there, there's one, let's see here, can I get it to focus, back there, right there, um, and then there's also a screw right there. So you unscrew all of those, and then also you want to make sure that you pop, there's just like little pins in there, you just take your finger and just pop those pins out, and then the whole glove box will come down, and you'll be able to see the wiring exposed and everything underneath there. So what you do is you take the camera wire, and the wire actually splits. So you take half the wire, and you run it underneath, or technically on top of, of the glove box, uh, zip tie it all in there, get it nice and clean. Once you get this glove box out, there's actually a hole right in here where you can feed things right in uh, to the navigation. So you do that. Also, you probably want to um, pull this molding out in here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get out of the car. I'll walk around to show you what you do. So that goes right into the, into the head unit. And then also it connects with the backup camera as well. So what you do is you just pull this um, this molding out with your fingers, just pull it out. And then I fed the wire um, right back in there. I just tucked it in there uh, and then I tucked it underneath. Um, half the wire, like I said, goes into the back unit and then the other half goes to the back uh, where the backup camera is. And then uh, the backup camera actually has a really long wire which, which connects uh, right in here. I think I like hit it back behind the dash um, and then uh, I just fed the wire underneath the the the, mold, the bottom molding of the car. Now, you, I think you could probably take this out. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I just took a like a plastic prying tool um, and tucked the wire in there. Um, and I, there are plenty of videos on how to install the navigation unit, so I'm not going to go into it. But you do take a prying tool and you just take these these two trim pieces in, and then there are a couple screws. Uh, it's it's really simple um, and then some people also take the um, air vents out as well but focusing here on the backup camera now what you do is so I tuck the wire um, back under here 
and then you pop these, the, the seed out. Now the way that you do that is you just take your, fing your fingers, your hand, uh, and you just get it under there and just pull straight up. And you do it on the same on the other the same way on the other side, and the seat will literally just pop right up. Um, and then you want to in the convertible at least you want to pull this the center armrest down, um, pull it out, and then there's a a metal bar like a small metal bar at the bottom there, and there's like the there's like a piece of material that covers it and, and clips over that metal bar. So you're gonna have to take your fingers and pull that metal bar or that plastic up over the metal, off of the metal bar. Um, once you do that, you'll be able to remove the seat completely and the bottom part of the seat. And then uh, you'll see there are two like metal, um, you know, two metal things that are like uh, sticking out with, uh, you know, the, the threads through it where there are two bolts. There's a bolt on that side and there's a bolt on that side. So you unbolt those two um, and then move the seat belts out of the way. You're gonna have to like kind of just unclip them and then uh, you lift the back seat straight up and then pull it out and the back seat will just come out. It's actually really easy. The whole thing should take you five minutes. If it's your first time, maybe you know, you'll fumble around a little bit, take you a little bit longer, but it's overall really easy. Once you do it once, you'll be able to do it again with your eyes closed. Um, now, once you get that out, uh, there is, just make a note, mental note, right in here, there's this plastic, like, you'll see all the wires are coming through. It's like a little tunnel that goes right into the trunk. So that's where you need to feed the wire through. But I recommend taking the trunk apart first. So to get the backup camera in here, now, the backup camera is awesome because it's right there. So it integrates uh, where your where your license plate light is, and then these four um, little yellow squares, those are actually LEDs. So when you put the the reverse lights on, those come on, which is kind of neat. So what you got to do is pull the entire lining of the car out of the of the trunk out. So I recommend if you have a convertible, put the top up and then take this compartment and push it up and then that way you have a little bit more room to work with. Um, so you got to pull this molding out right here and then you got to pop that pin out uh, right there and then the gas tank pin you got to pull that out as well and then um, literally you just pull pull back and also you should you should have already disconnected the battery. The battery should be disconnected, so this should be already up. But you basically take the whole bottom thing out. Um, it is a little bit of an or it, I mean, it's not difficult, but it definitely um, takes some time because uh, you really got to like tear the trunk apart. Um, and then also you have to take the top liner off. So you'll see there are these little plastic um, these plastic like rivets almost. So you just take those and th there's one two. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten of them, and then you also have to pull the the toolbox out as well. Then what you do is you take the wire, you feed it through. Uh, it should go up through here. Um, I need to electrical tape this because the wire is still sticking out. But you can actually feed the wire all the way through. Um, it's just a pain in the butt and I just didn't feel like doing it. You can use electrical tape and uh, just if you do a better job it will actually uh, look like this. This is actually electrical tape right here. Um, you can't really, you can barely tell it kind of flows really nicely so you know for me it's not worth the aggravation of trying to get the wire through this through this tube. Then once you do that you feed the wire in up through here then you have to um, split it and uh, connect it with the reverse light. So once you pull this off, uh, you'll see there is just like a plastic uh, cover. You pull that off and then uh, take some wire cutters and just uh, cut like a, a little bit of the rubber off of the of the wire. And then you just tap hard wire it in. Um, you also, by the way, have to remove um, the trunk trunk emergency latch as well to get to get to it. And then. Here you have to, there's a bunch of Torx bolts so you gotta pull those out. You also have to um, pry the BMW roundel off and then there's another Torx in there. Be really careful when you do this because uh, the whole thing is like, like it remains on a wire and it swings and you can scratch your trunk. I scratched it pretty badly. Fortunately, 
Um, I also know how to wet sand and remove uh, scratches. It, it took me like 45 minutes to get the scratches out though. So um, I would just advise using a towel or something. Um, you might be able to actually just disconnect this whole thing, but um, I didn't. So once you do that, then um, you'll be able to actually just take a, it's like a prying tool. Uh, you can get the prying tool like right in there. Uh, and then just, um, once you do that, you can, you just pull the, the old license plate light out and then you can feed the wire through. Um, you also have to take this, uh, the whole camera assembly and you have to cut it. I use the Dremel. Um, you know, the, just follow the instructions that you'll find on Avon's website. Um, it's, it definitely took me a little while. You gotta like cut it and then put it in and then test the fitment and then cut it again. And you just keep doing that. Um, and also I used hot glue uh, to seal it up from there. So I wish I could actually do the whole install video with you guys. Unfortunately, uh, the install is already done. Um, but that's just kind of a high level overview. And if you run into any issues or problems, uh, feel free to ask me in the, in the comment section and I'd be happy to help you out. Um, so I think that pretty much covers it. Um, but look at this unit. I mean, just getting into the car. I mean, get the focus. I mean, this thing is, is awesome. It really just, I am so impressed uh, with this unit and really, really happy with it. And I would recommend getting it in a heartbeat. So, um, and trust me, I tried the Eoni unit. The Dynavin unit, um, which has always been Avon's, I always, I always thought it was Avon's biggest competitor, but Dynavin is like out of date. They have, from my, to my knowledge, um, it's August 2018, to my knowledge, they have not come out with a new unit uh, in several years. So um, Avon, the Avon 3 just came out like earlier this year. It's the most up to date, the most current. It's got all the bells and whistles, all the features. You can put a SIM card in it. Most recent Android unit. Um, overall, awesome system. And um, I think that pretty much that pretty much sums it up for today's video. So um, be sure uh, to also follow me on Instagram and Three Black Shadow. That might have been actually how you got here. I appreciate you if you are currently following me um, as I do this build. I've got a bunch of great things to come, and I look forward to sharing them with you.